All right, everybody, welcome to webinar number eight of the Forex Boat Training Academy. Today, we're talking about uh, building an indicator in MQL4. So, super excited to have you on board. I can see we've got uh, quite a few people live, and uh, while this is starting, it's going to take a few seconds to load. So, once you can hear me and see me, uh, hopefully, just type into um, the chat that you can uh, see me and hear me so that we can confirm that everything is uh, working fine. I apologize right away about the bed. Um, I'm kind of like uh, in between places right now. So this is a spare room and I didn't want to, <laughs> to the, the bed to be distracting. So I just put it that way. So that should be fixed by next time. And uh, yeah, so please type in if you can see me and hear me. And as always, uh, once uh, we get uh, things kicked off, I'd uh, love to know where you're from. And uh, hi, Rod, thanks a lot. Uh, you're the first one to type uh, in uh, a message into the chat. Very, very excited that you, you guys can uh, see me. Awesome, thanks, Michelle, thanks, Matthews. So please tell me where you're from. Where uh, do we have, uh, who, where we, uh, do we have listeners and viewers from uh, today? Rod is from Sydney. <laughs> um, okay, uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, thanks, Frank. So yeah, tell me tell me where you're from. Today is a uh, Sunday. Uh, it's evening here, so it's my first time running a webinar in the evening, or first time in a while, uh, evening here in Brisbane. But this time worked out pretty well last month, so I decided to continue. Let's see what who we have here. Uh, Frank from Germany, wonderful. Matthews uh, from Brazil. That's that's great. Um, John from Malaysia, wonderful. Um, Paul, yes, here you're good. That's awesome. Uh, Boone from Melbourne. Hey Boone, how you going? You're also a regular now. Um, wonderful. So we've got we've got quite a few people. We've got uh, more coming online as we're speaking. Awesome. Ilya from Israel. That's uh, that's uh, quite far away as well. Carlos from Houston, Texas. Wonderful. Uh, good. Good that you can make it excited about that. Uh, Paul from Suffolk, England. Um, uh, Rod Matthews. Uh, Rod is saying Matthews, congrats on soccer goal to Brazil. That's all, <laughs> that's awesome. I haven't been following the Olympics myself actually. Um, yeah, and actually today a lot of uh, I went for a motorbike ride and a lot of the guys were excited about the fight, a UFC fight. Um, I forgot. I forgot who it was. It's like they're, they're fighting the second time so i gotta gotta check that out the replay of that um yeah so definitely uh matthews congrats on the soccer gold uh, to brazil i'm 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 assuming that's that's uh, to do with the olympics I haven't I haven't been following much but um if you're following olympics it it's pretty exciting what's going on there some interesting races i, I watched uh, i actually saw the uh, interview with the lady that's from Bahamas and she actually jumped or like she says she tripped and the 400 meter race that was pretty cool I thought that was pretty exciting um, all right so we've got we've got everybody who wanted to be online online I think and uh, so I'm assuming we've got we've got like a a bunch of uh, programmers today right so obviously uh, we've got quite a lot of people in the academy now, and hopefully you're enjoying the Facebook uh, private group. And uh, like, there's some interesting chats there, and I try to post some updates when I can. Um, yeah, so obviously we have different uh, webinars on different topics, and we're trying to mix it up. Uh, have some psychology webinars, have some webinars on risks, some webinars on actual trading or uh, technical analysis or fundamental analysis we had all of those webinars and we've even had some mql4 webinars already so this is going to be i think this is going to be our second mql4 webinar and um, obviously not everybody is into algorithmic trading so um only i guess the people that are really into that kind of stuff are here today and that's totally fine you know you might not be into something else and you'll miss out on skip on a, a webinar in the future and somebody skipped a webinar today so it's like a give and take but I, like i think that forex trading is very broad there's lots of different diverse topics it's good to know a lot about different 
uh, areas and be experienced in all of them, but you ultimately can't be experienced in everything, right? So you got to uh, pick and choose what you want to be good at and what you're going to uh, kind of like ignore or put aside for this for the time being. But at the same time, it's good to have that variety. And whenever you're confident enough to proceed further with other topics, you can always um, you know, jump on board or ask some questions in the Facebook Academy or if you have access to the webinar archives and check out the webinar archives for previous topics and stuff like that. So today we're talking about MQL4 and uh, I'm rolling up my sleeves because this is one of my favorite topics, really love uh, programming and especially when you combine it with uh, Forex trading, that's like, that's that's the best uh, in my view. So very excited about today and uh, today what are we going to do? We're going to program our very first indicator. So uh, if you have two monitors, highly recommend like put, uh, put uh, the webinar on one monitor and follow along with the code another. I'm gonna go quite slow, not too, too fast, and there isn't too much code that we're going to be creating, but at the same time, there'll be a lot of fundamentals, a lot of very interesting stuff. Uh, so you can follow along. If you only have one monitor, that's totally fine. You can try follow along or you can, um, you know, you can always just uh, later on uh, do that so the code on on your own after you've absorbed all of this knowledge. Um, one kind of um, thing I wanted to mention at the start is that personally, I'm not uh, like I don't create indicators all the time. I'm not uh, the indicator creating type of type of trader. So. Um, like I, if I, I still, I'm still comfortable explaining all this stuff. It's, it's totally, it's totally, it's totally interesting. It excites me a lot. Um, but at the same time, it's like that. That's the reason why we didn't have it in the courses in the MQL4 course or in any other course. We didn't actually talk about creating indicators because it is a kind of like a standalone topic. You don't always need to know how to create indicators, even if you trade with uh, Forex robots or uh, you like use forex robots you don't need to know how to create indicators but at the same time it's very very valuable knowledge so you'll see that even though i don't create indicators all the time i'm pretty comfortable with this topic because i i know it quite well and the reason for that is you got to know how indicators work in order to to use them to their maximum effect right so um you, you this knowledge even though if you're not going to create indicators in the future it will allow you to then open up an indicator and go through it and understand how it works just just because you know this stuff you know what arrays are you know what buffers are you know what series are you know um how how what different calls are because indicators are very specific they're different to expert advisors so it's always good to have this knowledge in the back of your head because if you're going to be using expert advisors they rely on indicators and it's good to know to be able to open an indicator and quickly understand what's going on inside there all right, so that's kind of like the quick intro uh, to today. We've got a couple more people jumping on board. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, so let's let's kick it off. We're going to start with a quick presentation, and uh, we'll take it from there. All right, let's let's get started. Oh, before the presentation, of course, we're gonna have. Uh, wait, wait, one second. Let me do that again. I gotta share my screen before I do that. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Let's let's kick these things off. All right, you should see the infinite screen of uh, forex webinars right now. Okay, so uh, first thing I wanted to show you is our beautiful animation. Wonderful. <laughs> I just can't get enough of it. All right, so let's let's proceed to our um, presentation for today. Forex Boat Trading Academy. Before we proceed with today's webinar, I um, I'm obliged to show you the disclaimer it has to be presented for at least five seconds because uh, Forex Boat is a regulated company. Have a read through it. So maybe if you're watching uh, replay or if you have an opportunity, pause this video. Just read through it. Understand if you agree to this disclaimer, then we will proceed with the webinar. And uh, off we go. Okay, plan for today. Number one, we're going to talk about some theory. Yes, uh, even though we are we have a hands-on session, we're going to programming. There is going to be a bit of theory involved, so that we are all 
on the same page with what's going on so that we have these concepts down pat and we don't get lost during the webinar. Number two, analyze an existing indicator. So just as I mentioned just now, it is important to know how to assess and dig into the code of existing indicators. It's one of the most valuable skills in knowing how to code indicators. Even though if you don't, even if you don't code indicators yourself or you're not going to a lot, this is going to be a very valuable skill to have. So we're going to start off, off with that. And then we'll create our own indicators. It's going to be hands-on session. So follow along if you can. And then we'll have some homework. Yes, I'm going to give you some homework to practice when you go away from here. And then you'll be able to uh, later um, post your progress or thoughts or comments in the private Facebook uh, group that we have in our Forex Boat Club, and we can all help each other out there with our codes. That's going to be fun. And finally, we will have a Q&A session as always. So bring your questions, all your questions, MQL4, non-MQL4. We're going to at least have at least five or 10 minutes for that at the end. All right, so I hope you're excited. Let's proceed to the theory. Number one, arrays. That's going to be our very first topic of theory for today. What are arrays? So here's an array. And the best way to think of an array, by the way, this knowledge is going to be very helpful even if you um, decide to program in other programming languages, literally any programming language, C, Python, uh, Perl, R, um, C++, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, anything, well, this information will be useful. So this is kind of like a programming intro. Um, arrays, what are arrays? How, how do they work? What are they used for? So an array here, you've got an array of length 10. And the best way to imagine it, an array, or the way I think about it, is kind of like a bookshelf lying on its side. So it's like it's like a, a horizontal bookshelf. And uh, from left, you, got, you can put like some information in here. So instead of putting books into the shelves, you can put uh, data so you can put some uh, some information here or data let's say you can put a number in here you can put the number uh, 75 and then 76 or 143 you can put numbers in here or you can put letters in there or whatever other type of data you have you can put pictures in there videos into each one of them so that's basically an array it's an it's a data construct a way to store information in a sequential manner so here you've got an array of length 10 and as you can see the numeration starts from zero so this is one of the um, concepts or one of the underlying principles of uh, programming in MQL4 that arrays or other types of indexation, it starts from zero. So there are programming languages where uh, indexation starts from one. For example, R is one of those programming languages, one that pops to the top of my mind. Um, so sometimes indexation will start with one, but most of the time in most programming languages that I've worked with, um, indexation starts with zero, and MQL4 is one of them. So that's something to remember. Even though the array's length is 10, the last element has number nine because it starts with zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, all right, so that's what an array is, and you can store information there. It can be of much greater length than just 10. This is a very simple, basic example. So why do we need arrays when we're talking about indicators? Well, the next kind of thing we need to discuss is that arrays can uh, be of, well, can have two uh, classifications, if you will, in MQL4. Let's have a look at these two classifications. An array can be classified as a buffer, and an array can be classified as a series. So, or an array can be just left as an array. So you can have an array, you can have a buffer, you can have a series. And so what, what are these, uh, what is the difference? What are they all used for? So a buffer is basically, is, is not very different to an array. So an array is, is this, a buffer is when you tell your program, your indicator, that I want to use this array as one of my um, one of my <laughs> sources of information for the indicator. So one of the uh, so you kind of like tag an array as where this indicator will be storing its information. So you know how an indicator has a line on the chart. So well, that uh, line is stored, or whatever information you see on the chart created by an indicator is stored inside an array. So if an array is used to store 
um, the data of an indicator, then it's called a buffer. And you need to know, let your program know that which exactly array do you want it to use as a buffer. And you can only have eight buffers inside an indicator. So, so basically you can have eight maximum of eight lines per indicator. So that's just kind of like a way of tagging your array. And you'll see this in practice, just to remember the word buffer. And when we come across it in the tutorial, you'll recognize it right away and you'll see, ah, oh, that's what it does. So we're just telling a program that that's going to be our uh, storage facility for this indicator. And then a series, series is a bit more complicated. When you create create an array and you tag it as a series, what happens is instead of being numerated from left to right, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it is numerated from right to left, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the other way. Um, and it's, so it's just bas basically a reverse numeration. Why is that the case? Why is that needed? Well, as you'll see, that is something that is very handy when it comes when we come to dealing with uh, time series data, which is uh, for which forex um, quotations are an example of. Excuse me. So, all right. So that's uh, that's what a series is. is is basically an array that's numerated in the opposite direction. All right, so that's our uh, theory. That's our first part of the theory. Now we can uh, proceed to. Um, okay, so now we can proceed to our coding. By the way, if uh, it seems like Boone is saying it seems like a bit of a blur, if it seems like a bit of a blur, try closing all other applications that you have running and make sure that your internet is dedicated to our um, webinar because. Uh, like some, a lot of people actually have very good clear pictures when we're running these. So just try to somehow um, maximize the connection that you're using for the webinar. Um, all right, but otherwise I'm going to have very large text, so we'll be able to see everything very nicely. Okay, so this is a meta editor, and before we proceed to meta editor, I wanted to show you um, inside MQL4, so we don't need that. Inside MQ, inside MetaTrader 4, I just wanted to show you the indicator that you're going to create by the end of today. This it was this is what it looks like. So this indicator over here, this is what we're going to create today. Doesn't that look really cool, right? You can't, we can't even understand what it's doing right now, but it already looks cool, and that's what we're going to be creating. All right. So in order to proceed with today's webinar, you're going to need Meta Editor. It's, it's this button up at the top over here. I'm going to assume that you have some programming knowledge already or some MQL4 knowledge already. Um, if not, then there's always that MQL4 course in the Forex Bow Training Academy. Check it out. It's got some very valuable step-by-step -step guides on uh, things like um, data and uh, types of data and uh, if, else statements, loops, and so on, because we're going to be using some of those today. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to click the new button up at the top, and then we're going to select custom indicator, click next. And here we're going to populate these fields. So just, just uh, I'm just going to do this quickly because I can't increase this specific text. Basically, it's asking for the name, the author, and the link. Uh, so just give it a name, say my, whoops, my awesome indicator. All right, and here, don't change anything. Click Next, uh, indicate in separate window. Just uh, check that box and click Finish. There you go. So now you should be able to see the text. It's quite large. Let me see if I can increase it maybe even more, 18. So let's try size 20. There we go. So now the text is very large. Let me know if you have any problems, but otherwise you should be able to see it quite well. So what has happened here? This um, code has been pre-generated for us, and this is what we're going to be populating. So we're going to be populating um, more code into here to make this into a functional indicator. For now, it's just like a carcass or a skeleton of an indicator. And right now, what we're going to do before we start coding, as uh, we agreed in the intro, we're actually going to find an indicator and we're going to dissect an existing indicator. So let's go and do that. On the left, we're going to um, expand indicators, and we're going to scroll down, and we're going to find, ba -ba -bum, we're going to find MACD. So the MACD indicator, moving average uh, convergence divergence indicator. Um, you should be quite familiar with this indicator, at least 
uh, heard about it before. And so now what we want to do is we want to, um, we're going to start looking through this indicator and see how it works. All right, so at the top, we've got some comments. So these lines, uh, these slashes mean uh, comments, the double slashes comments. So that is all ignored by the compilator. Um, then we've got some uh, information here. So property, <coughs> excuse me. So here we've got um, just the copyright, the link, the description. Um, this really, all of these four, they don't affect the functionality of the indicator. Then we've got an interesting uh, bit of code. So I'm just going to show you the whole thing here. You can see it's quite long, but don't worry. All of this will make sense. And in fact, it just in a couple of minutes, we're going to be creating the same thing ourselves. So here we've got include moving averages dot MQH. So that's not something that you will norm normally see in indicators or having your own code. What they're doing here, the guys from Metacodes, they're just actually including some additional code. So this line will be replaced by a whole new file of code uh, that will just go right in here. And that saves them time so they, so they can then reuse that. And I'll show you that file if I go to dun, 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 include and I look for moving averages.mqh, that's this file. So basically, this file has some predetermined functions. And we talked about functions in the MQL4 programming course. You can see that it's got some functions that are then included in that file uh, in, into uh, the MACD indicator. And then, then they'll be using this one, simple MA on buffer. They'll be using this function to calculate the MACD. So basically, that's what they're doing it for. So we don't really need this file. Uh, now that we know what it's here for. Next, indicator se settings. All right, so we're going to kind of breeze through all of this without um, going into <coughs> too much detail because once we start coding it ourselves, then uh, it'll make more sense to go into detail. So here we've got some uh, property indicator separate window that just that's like a, um, a command. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's like a command to say that the indicator has to go in a separate window then indicator buffers that's how many uh lines or as you as you remember we discussed we talked about arrays and then we said that uh, arrays can be to can be classified as buffers so basically here the indicator is saying you're telling the indicator that you want to have two buffers in this indicator and then you're saying the first one should be color silver as you remember the MACD has silver and red second one has to be color red indicator uh, width one, that's just the width of the line. We're not going to worry about that. Uh, then we got input. Inputs are basically external uh, parameters that you can set for the indicator. So we've got the fast, e uh, fast uh, EMA, EMA, input uh, slow EMA, input signal SMA. So those are all inputs you can select for the MACD. As you remember, when you call the MACD, you got three parameters that you can set. And then you've got indicator buffers. You've got the external MACD buffer and external signal buffer. That's that's basically, basically um, you are creating, that's how you create arrays. And then later, they'll be turned into buffers. So for now, they're just arrays, even though they have buffer in their name. Then you've got a Boolean external parameter false. So that'll be used later on as well. So here we've got on in it. Uh, that's uh, the initialization function of an indicator or initialization uh, part, kind of like body part of the indicator. And we've got uh, indicated digits, just the precision of the indicator, set index style. What it does is uh, says, OK, so whatever we're going to have in buffer number zero, as you remember, numeration starts from zero. And even buffers, there's eight of them, but they're going to be numerated 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, in this case, we're only going to have two. As you can see here, it says indicator buffers two. So the numeration is going to start from zero and going to go up to one. And what it's saying, so actually, before we do these lines, it's better to look at these lines, indicator buffer mapping. So what it happens here is it says set index buffer. So it's saying um, who's going to be our buffer number zero. Buffer number zero is going to be X MACD buffer. So basically, this buffer that we created here, we create an array, right? We create an array. And now we're saying that array is going to be our buffer number zero. And then X signal buffer. So we create an array here. And now we're saying that array is going to be our uh, buffer number one. So these two, now after these two lines are executed, 
we know that this array is going to be used to store one of the lines of the indicator, and this array is going to be used to store the other line. Uh, specifically, this one is going to be used to store the gray line or the histogram. This one's going to be used to store the red line or the um, or the, this one is going to be the signal line. Okay, so that's uh, that's our um indicator so maybe let me try make this a bit bigger 22 second tools options let's try make this bigger all right that's that's now pretty big um okay so set index style zero draw histogram Said, uh, that means for the, the buffer number zero, we're going to draw a histogram. As you remember, MACD has a histogram. For set index style one, uh, for this other array, we're going to draw a line. Um, and then set index draw begin. Uh, that's uh, basically, we don't need to go into detail on that. That's just basically saying where you want to start drawing a certain line. So line number one. Is only going to be starting to draw is going to be drawn from this uh, bar but we won't go into detail on that because right now we don't need that um indicator show name just show a certain name for uh, your indicator uh, like a in the in the indicator window you'll see how that works in our example set index label so set some labels for the lines um then we won't go into detail on that right now we don't need to worry about those things what we're interested in is the onCalculate function and how it works. So here you've got some uh, constants that are passed into the function. And if you go into our indicator, you'll see that that's pre-populated for us. And those are basically the variables and arrays or series that we can use. So we've got the time, the open, the high, low, close, tick volume, volume, the spread. And also we've got rates total and previous calculated. Uh, so that is uh, all of the things that we can work with inside the indicator and you'll see how we worked with them as we go along uh, also rates total and previous calculated these are quite tricky we'll talk about them in a bit as well all right so then we've got uh, initialization of the i and the limit variables so you can, as you can see we're nearly at the end already uh, some uh, some variables are introduced uh, then we're not going to worry about this part of the code we're going to worry about uh, this. We are going to worry about it, but when when we get to it in our coding, right now we're just going to go to the heart of the indicator, and that is just these three lines. So just these three lines is the whole indicator being calculated like that. So what's happening here is uh, in a loop. Um, we'll talk about this loop as well in a bit in, in our code. Uh, basically, the X MACD buffer is being populated. So X MACD buffer, as you remember, that's the buffer number zero. That's where the MACD is uh, being stored and it's being uh, populated. Uh, it's basically being calculated as the difference between one moving average minus another moving average. So this IMA function, as uh, we discussed in the iCustom webinar, the IMA function, it actually calls the moving average with these parameters. And then you call the other moving average with the other parameters. And basically, so this is, this these two lines actually, is the whole calculation of the indicator. All of this is like just a big, big preambula, a big uh, intro into what's going on. And then this is just the calculation. And then this line calculates the signal, um, signal line the red line so they're just calling that function from the included file now i know this might all sound a bit like confusing at the start and like a lot of the things are going on here but that was a very useful exercise for us uh, already because now we know more or less like a little we know a bit about what's going on and the main structuring blocks of an indicator even though they might to seem totally alien to us um, at this at this stage. Now is going to be much easier to code our own indicator, and so let's proceed to that right away. So just even if uh, a lot of this stuff you didn't underst quite understand, don't worry. Just power through it. Go to let's go to our indicator, and now it'll all make sense. All right. So here's our indicator, 
And this is what we're going to start, how we're going to start coding it. So here we've got property indicator separate window. So that means it's going to be in a separate window. Now we're going to add some code. Here we're going to say property, and then we're going to say indicator buffers two. Yeah, oh, well, let's start with one. We're going to say we're going to say buffers one. That means we just want one line. Then we're going to say property indicator uh, color one. So that is the color of the first buffer. It's going to be aqua. Okay. So that's us saying that we want we want one line for this indicator, and we want it to be uh, aqua in color. The next thing that we want is uh, we want to create that buffer. We want to, or we want to create an array that's going to be used as a buffer. So let's put a comment here, and I'll say buffers, but actually I'll say actually, for now they are still arrays, right? Until they are turned into buffers. And uh, here we're going to just for now add one buffer. So we'll say double x my buffer. That's it. Square brackets. Colon. So this is the same thing. If I go to the MACD example, you'll see here we had the x MACD buffer. In our case, it's going to be x my buffer, and the double at the start just means that that's the type of data that's going to be stored in that array. It's going to be uh, values like floating point values. Okay, good. On in it. Uh, here we're going to first specify uh, precision. We're going to say indicator digits and here we're going to say just digits so we want the same precision as is on our chart makes sense right oh well we don't know what we're doing yet so it'll make sense in a second when we talk about um, what exactly we're going to have and I'm going to put it before the indicator buffer mapping and here I'm going to say all right um, I have I have an array X my buffer. Now I want to map it and change it into a buffer. So as you remember here in the MACD example, we had X MACD buffer, and then it's they changed it into a set index buffer, uh, and they said, okay, so that's buffer number zero is going to be X MACD buffer. That's exactly what we're going to have here. So we're going to say set index buffer, and here we're going to say zero text my buffer so that is exactly doing that we're we're saying this this array now we want to turn it into a buffer for the indicator that's where the indicator is going to store its uh, line um, next what we're going to do is we're going to um, change the style so this is, so I'm just going to say styles here. So this is this line that in the MACD indicator we had at the start, drawing settings. That's what we're going to do now. So we're gonna, we kind of doing it in the opposite uh, order. We're first setting the buffer. I think that's that makes sense. You first say which ones you want to use as your uh, buffers, and then you set the drawing styles. But it's totally up to the programmer to choose in each case. So here we're going to set the style. So we'll say set index style and then we'll say so buffer number zero and what do we want we want to draw underscore line we want to draw a line all right and then here we're going to say uh, finally we're just going to add a short name so we'll say string short uh, underscore name equals let's call it let's say your first indicator is running Hold on, and put an exclamation mark here. All right, and now we're going to put that indicator short name. We're going to put this text as the short name for the indicator. So in the indicator window on the top left, you'll see exactly that um, that uh, text. And also, we're going to set later set label. We're going to say uh, set index uh, label. And here we're going to say. Yeah, for um, for buffer number zero, we're going to set the label to true range, and this kind of we finally getting to what we are going to be coding. What's our indicator going to be doing? And our indicator is going to be calculating the true range for every single bar, and basically what that means is it's going to subtract the high from the low 
and that's going to that difference is called the true range and that's what it's going to be plotting on the chart so if i go back here this aqua line is actually plotting the difference between the high and the low of every bar so here you can see this bar has a very large difference between the high and low that's why it has a high value and uh, this bar for example has a lower high and low difference that's why it has a lower value so that's what we're going to be plotting we're going to be taking the high minus the low for every single bar and we're going to be plotting it on in this uh, separate window we'll worry about the purple line later all right so that is our um that's what we're going to be plotting and so far we've done the initialization function so just to recap we've created an array so we've uh, specified how many buffers we want the color of the first buffer um, then we've uh, created an array we've specified the precision of the indicator we've set an array to be a buffer uh, we've um, set the style of the line that we want to draw we don't want to draw a line we set some uh, a short name and a label so that's what we've done so far and what we want to do now is move on to the on calculate function so here what we're going to do is the fastest way and the way i like doing this is you just go to the on calculate in another indicator and you just copy some stuff so i'm going to copy this this bit int i and limit copy in here basically we will need these two variables so it's a good idea to initialize them we're not going to worry, worry about that that's like a, a more of an advanced thing what we need is this this part so we'll copy this here and um i'm going to explain now how this bit works because it is quite an important bit and uh, it allows us to uh, be more efficient with our indicated calculations so before before we do that though i'm going to first first let's copy this part as well so copy the MACD counted on the first buffer and that will kind of like nearly get us to the end so copy that just replace this indicator and here we're going to say x my buffer um, i and here we're going to say well let's put the brackets in i, I prefer brackets so we're going to say x my buffer i is going to be if you know that it's going to be high i i minus o i hold on all right so basically this is pretty much it uh, the only things that we need to talk about is these two blocks. So this block and this block. So we'll start with this block. Indicator counted in the first buffer. So what is going on here? Um, in a certain loop, which we'll discuss in a second, we're actually just populating our buffer or our array. We're saying x my buffer uh, with the index i equals to high with the index i minus low with the index i. So basically we're going through uh hi uh, we're going through our bars where i is the number of the bar from the right from right to left and we're saying okay take the high subtract the low and put that information put that value that calculated value into x my buffer so into our buffer where the information is stored and that is how we populate our uh indicator and then that line is going to be drawn on the chart so what we need to talk about now is this uh, this loop and this block of code what does it do so it can be a bit confusing uh this limit equals rates total minus previous calculated and then this this bit as well so what is uh what is this all for why do we need the uh, rates total the previous calculated and how do they all work what is it for why can't we just uh keep this line why can't we just keep this calculation well let's have a look at our presentation that will all make sense all right, so rates total. This is the second part of the theory that uh, we need to discuss. Um, okay, one second. So this line, this should appear. Animations. There we go, that should come later. All right, so let's say we have a series, right? So we have bars on our chart, and bars on our chart, they are numerated from right to left. So a bar bars are a time series, and therefore bar number zero, 
is the current bar. Bar number one is the last closed bar. Bar number two is the one before that, and so on. So on your chart, always bar number zero is the one on the right. It's the current one. And like, and then it's numerate to the right. So those um, variables that we saw just now are, dis are uh, described like this. So let's say you have 70 bars on your chart right now then that is rates total. So rates total indicates how many in total um, bars you have on your chart. Then uh, the next one is previously calculated. Previously calculated is a variable that tells you how many of those bars you have already calculated with the last time the indicator ran. So let's say, for instance, your indicator ran, and then you switch your terminal off, and you switch it back on later later down the track, uh, like a hypothetical example. And uh, before, your chart only had 50 bars. Now your chart has 70 bars. So race total is 70. Previous calculator is 50. Then the way limit is calculated, that other variable that we saw, is calculated as the difference between rates total and previously calculated. So in this case, limit will be 20. And let me bring up that code. So here, this is what you see here. Rates total is given to you. It's given to you here on the on calculate function. And previous calculated, these two values are given. So you know how many there is bars total on your chart and how many previously were calculated. So rates total minus previously calculated will uh, is the way limit is calculated. So that's this limit that we have here, that's 20. 70 minus 50 is 20 bars. And that is basically telling us that we still haven't calculated the indicator for these 20 bars. And then here, what you see is if previously calculated is greater than zero, so if this, when is, pre, when is previously calculated going to be greater than zero? Pretty much always, except for the very, very first time you run the indicator on your chart. If you run it for the first time, then previously calculated is going to be equal to zero. Otherwise, previously calculated is always going to be greater than zero. So basically, this if is going to be executed every single time except for the very first time. And what they're doing here is they're saying limit plus plus. And that means that let's take this limit and increase it by one. Why do they want to increase limit from 20 to 21? Why do they want to take an extra bar? So even though you've, so basically this limit is going to be the bars that we still need to calculate, the new bars, right? So we need to calculate our indicator on these new 20 bars. So why are they increasing limit by one to include this bar, this last bar of the previously calculated? Why do they want to recalculate on the previous bar? The reason for that is a precaution measure. It's a precaution measure because um, maybe this bar, this the value of the indicator actually changed. Maybe it was calculated incorrectly. Maybe uh, the last available information was not taken into account. So when the last tick arrived, maybe it was not taken into account. Or maybe there's some uh, reverse feedback and this last bar needs to be recalculated. So it's just like a standard practice to make sure that nothing is left out, nothing is missed out. It's always a good idea to recalculate that last transitional bar because once you move on to the next bar, maybe that value actually changed slightly and you didn't capture it in that last tick. So that's why they do the limit plus plus. And moreover, based on, depending on your indicator, some indicators, they change their values. So they redraw, that's called the redrawing of indicators. If your indicator redraws and you know about it, and if it redraws, let's say, three values, then you need to increase increase limit in this case by three. You need to do limit equals limit plus three or something like that. So you should be aware of how your indicator behaves. If it redraws, then you will need to, instead of dealing with the new just the new bars, however many they are, most of the time there'll be just one new bar. Let's, let's face it, like your indicator is working, the terminal is on, so you're just adding one new bar. Well, if your indicator redraws, uh, you always will need to increase the limit from instead of the amount of new bars to the amount of new bars plus however many uh, indicator bars your, your indicator will be redrawing. So that's something you just need to uh, keep in mind. But for now, we're just going to keep it at that. That is just going to be a plus one or a plus plus. So basically, that's what these are. A lot of the times, they can be confusing to deal with. They can be um, 
quite like unknown if you don't know what the, what's going on so a lot of the time you just like you just copy these lines and then just copy this loop as well without knowing what's happening but hopefully after today's presentation now you know exactly what's happening that uh, rates totals total number of bars on your chart previously calculates how many you calculate previously so and then to calculate to find out how many you need to calculate this time you take the difference between the two and then you also increase that difference by one just as a precaution measure and then one final thing that happens at the end of this uh, iteration is rates total when a new bar appears rates total will become the previously calculated and that makes sense because you you had 50 that already were calculated you calculate another 20 or you calculate another 21 but you recalculate one bar so basically you cal you had 50 calculated you calculate another 20 so that means there's a total of 70 calculated and that means that all of the bars that you have on your chart are have now been accommodated for so your indicator has been counted for every single uh, bar on your chart and that means that the new, the new previously calculated that's going to uh, come into effect when a new bar arrives should be equal to rates total that's why rates total is going to replace previously calculated on the next bar that comes hopefully that all makes sense um, and uh, that's how these work rates total and previously calculated and limit and so then this uh, loop becomes obvious right away so basically what's happening is for for i equals zero starting from the very right going all the way up to limit i plus plus let's go back here uh, so let's say limit is 21 that basically means so from zero to one two three four five up to 20 so that's uh, let's not get uh, let's not forget that indexation starts from zero so if you're going through 21 bars you're going to go from zero one two three up to 20 because zero to 20 is 21 bars so basically that loop is saying i want to loop across these 21 bars on the right i want to calculate my indicator for this value 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 um in fact um this this is not the best approach personally the way i would do it i would say for i equals limit minus one and then all the way to i um equals zero and i minus minus so the that's that's the correct way of doing it because some indicators actually use their previous values to calculate future values so what i just did is instead of going from right to left instead of saying calculate the value here calculate the value here calculate the value here and going all the way to the left what i just did is i re i flipped that loop uh that's uh yeah that for loop and i said we'll start over here at bar number 20 then we'll calculate this one then we'll calculate this one and we'll move to the right it's uh, always a good idea to move from left to right when you're calculating an indicator why well because if your indicator relies on its previous values like for example um i i can't i can't even give you an example off the top of my head right now but there are indicators that will take into account their previous value uh to calculate the next value and so they kind of uh feedback they have a feedback loop in the indicator and uh it's important to like basically you won't be able to calculate this value until this value is calculated so that's why you start from the left to the right so it's always a good habit to have to start from the right from the left to the right but basically this means exactly the same start at limit minus one go all the way to zero inclusive and this one is also inclusive uh and then subtract uh reduce the um, index by one calculate and now we can compile it compiles fine so if i go to my chart let's open a chart uh, there's australian dollar us dollar Dun -dun -dun. and let's change this to bars so now let's let's add our indicator so if you look at the indicators here you should be able to find it no problem uh, my awesome indicator just drag it onto the chart colors you can see it's aqua let's increase the width so we can see it well click OK uh, give it a second I must have done I must have uh, made a mistake somewhere here All right let's let's not let's not do this let's let's see if this was my this was a mistake somewhere here okay let's run that 
Hugging is a fair, it's an awesome part. Okay, so that that's reversing of that loop. I made a mistake somewhere there. Um, so yeah, debugging is a, is an awesome part uh, of uh, building indicators. So here, hmm, here probably. Okay, I'll I'll have to get back to. I'll post in the Facebook group what what I did incorrect there. Um, but we'll keep it at, we'll keep it like that for now, I guess. Um, all right. So there's our indicator, and as we can see, it's working. Uh, fine it's uh, it's got it's got its lime color and um, what we want to do is we want to just test we just want to see if it's working correctly so I'm going to add a uh, so we can see you can see the um, window here with the data window and if you just uh, hover over a bar a certain bar for instance this bar over here uh, it will tell you the high and the low for this bar and the high of the low first bar is um, 0 0.76443 and 0 0.76058. And so basically the question is, is the difference between those two? Uh, so this is where we'd get out our, our calculator and the difference between those two is just over uh, 300 something, uh, just under 400 actually. Uh, is it being shown here properly? So if we go here, so you can see it's 0 0.00385. It's probably too small for you, for you to see on this recording, but uh, still, so the basically that means that the difference has been calculated correctly. And as you can see, that's, that's one of the largest high to low bars that we have, and then it uh, drops off. So here it's lower and then goes up. So here it's higher again. Uh, and so that the pattern maintains and that is your true range indicator So you can see by these spikes right away where the big bars happened. So if I zoom in here uh, You can see that these bars these massive bars These massive bars occurred exactly at those big spikes uh, And if you zoom out you can you can actually see it's kind of like the pulse of the market you can see where the market had massive spikes and maybe those are related to news or maybe those are related to uh, some certain events happening in the market. Uh, and um, it's very interesting to observe these. So if you scroll out, you can see this, there's a massive spike here in uh, June, uh, 24th June. So yeah, that, that looks definitely looks like uh, something related to the Brexit or something like that. Uh, this is a, even though this is Australian dollar, um, it's uh, it's still uh, like news of other currencies still affects it as well. Okay, so there we go. That's uh, how we uh, created that part of the indicator. And now the homework part for you is going to be to create the second line. And what I did with the second line is I just created. Uh, this purple line or the color here is magenta uh, what I did is actually uh, this line calculates the difference between the clo open and close instead of high and low it cal calculates open and close and the way you can see it's working is that uh, there's a, there's a zero line so sometimes the blue the blue line is always above zero right but the purple line is sometimes below zero sometimes above zero and that's because sometimes sometimes your high sometimes your open is above the close like in this case sometimes your open is below the close and so that you can always tell by that if you have a bearish bar or a bullish bar so here you've got three bearish bars and in all three instances the purple line is under the zero line uh when you have a bullish bar like uh like here you have two bullish bars in a row the purple line is above the zero line and so it's a it's a useful line as well uh, and that will be your homework to uh, create to add this line to your indicator um, it's going to be quite challenging but nevertheless we've already discussed everything you're just going to need to change indicator buffers to two add a second color add a second array um, then you're going to need to uh, initialize that uh, buffer you're going to need to set a style for that buffer you're gonna to need to give it a label. Then, if you go down um, here, you need to go. You're going to need to 
add it into the loop for the calculation. So for the second uh, buffer needs to be calculated here as well. And that's pretty much it. So after you do all of those things, you should be able to see a second line. And if you ever get stuck, then just refer to the MACD indicator because it also has two lines. Oh, well, it has a, a line, a, a, a um, histogram and a line, but you will be able to kind of like get some ideas from here on how to calculate this, uh, how to create the calculation for your uh, second line. All right, so there we go. That's That should be your end result. That's what you're aiming for. So the blue line and the pink line. Uh, okay, so there we go. Um, um that's that's all we wanted to do elia is uh giving me a hint on what what mistake i made in my code thank you very much it should have been greater or equal to zero i uh, know double equal to zero that's that's my my bad uh you get carried away sometimes um okay so that's that's us for today uh we still have a few minutes for q a let me see if that's if that's all I wanted to cover. Okay, yep, so I gave you homework, and now we have our q and I'm going to close this window, so uh, get ready to type in your questions, and I'm going to, for now, return back to, or move away from the presentation. Okay. All right, there we go, so that was, that was it. Um, I know I should have mentioned at the start that this is an advanced type of tutorial. And I did mention that uh, some knowledge of MQL4 is expected. Um, but yeah, uh, it's kind of like more of an advanced tutorial uh, because ultimately if uh, you found that that is a bit like over your head, like a bit com too complex, then um, a good a good place to start is the MQL4 programming course. Like you, you could see already from here that you can add value to your trading by knowing how to code. You can create indicators like that. Uh, well, there's more you can create for ro robots, Forex robots that can um, do your trading for you. Um, and a good place to start to learn from the ground up is the MQL4 programming course. So I'll, I'll take that as a note for myself to next time mention that this is more of an advanced type of tutorial. Um, other than that, other than that, uh, if you did uh, manage to follow along and like you could understand most of the things we were doing, hopefully that was valuable. Um, a lot of the times indicators are missed out or kind of like left out of the uh, Forex programming uh, world and because people jump into expert advisors right away, indicators are not that as important. You don't really need to know how to code indicators to use expert advisors. But as we, as we discussed at the beginning, uh, indicators are um, knowing how to read indicators is a valuable skill to have because then you can read other people's indicators, not just create yours. Okay, so that was that. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't see any any questions coming through. So uh, either you, either everybody just fell asleep, or it was all crystal clear. So hopefully that the sec second one's the case. Um, I apologize to Rod and Paul and Boone and anybody else who couldn't see the code. Um, it sometimes happens, and um, uh, this it's a it's a good thing. So I mean, like it's a good uh, it's a good question. We'll uh, the replays are usually good, so you can always check out the replay, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the code very well there. Going forward, uh, we'll try to investigate that and see if we can um, improve somehow the quality or change the provider of our webinars or something like that. But uh, yeah, so apologies if you couldn't see the code in this uh, specific live presentation. Oh, thanks, thanks, Rod, for your understanding. Um, all right, so uh, while you guys, if anybody's still typing up a question or uh, not, um, ba -bum, ba -bum. Uh, the question I wanted to, um, ba -bum. what do I want to, what, let's, let's do a quick poll. That's what I wanted to do. Uh, Give me a second. So create poll, and we're going to say, um, uh, <laughs> um, I wanted to say, are you going to? Will you do your homework? But that's totally up to you. So it's, it's not not a good uh, question. Let's say, um, do you think that uh, reading indicator code 
will be useful in your trading career. All right, so let's see. Yes, no, uh, yes, no. Uh, all right, so do you think that reading indicator code in the future, so from what we discussed today, will be useful in your trading career? So basically, do you think you picked up a useful skill today or not? And if you ever think that it's uh, you need it, will you ever come back and uh, rewatch this webinar maybe if you don't need it right now? Uh, so, so far we've got yes, 100%. Uh, let's give it uh, five more seconds if you haven't cast your vote yet. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, wonderful. I'm super glad. It's always exciting when everybody uh, or like even nearly everybody is, uh, is excited about the skills that we learned uh, today. And um, let's have a quick look back here. Okay, Rod's got a question. Is it much harder to do things like your own buy and sell signals on the chart, Carol? Um, no, no, it's not. Uh, you just, all you need is, you know how we selected set, uh, set, was it set index style, set index style, and we said draw line? Uh, you just need to say set index style draw arrow. And uh, what draw arrow does is allows you to put, um, put symbols on the chart so you can put like a buy arrow or a sell arrow you can put a smiley face <laughs> or you can put like a tick mark whatever like you know winding symbols just use those you ju you'll just need to do some research around that but that's basically what you do and then when it's like empty there will be no symbol on the chart but when when uh, you're it's pretty cool like if if your buffer has like a zero nothing is drawn so zero 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 nothing is drawn and then when you put a value so you put the price at which you want to set your label let's say you put the price of one point uh seven four seven five or well, seven four three seven five something like that and that's where your smiley face will appear and then again zero 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 so that way you can place a smiley face an arrow a down arrow an up arrow and uh that way you can kind of like tell yourself where the signals are coming and it's quite a useful thing and you've seen probably indicators like that which have just uh, occasional arrows or something that that's how they work they just say set index style instead of draw a draw line say draw arrow but arrow doesn't actually mean arrow it just means like any symbol that you want so that's that's uh, how you can do it <laughs> awesome terrific smiley face sounds good uh, Matthews how long did it take you to to take for you from when you started learning about Forex to when you set up your first profitable robot good question um, so started learning about forex april 2007 and then uh lost my first couple of deposits like that same year um i don't know a few months into it i remember I lost a hundred dollars i lost another hundred dollars and then i lost three hundred dollars that was all like manual trading and then i realized whoa i can do algorithmic trading so i started learning algorithmic trading on a demo account end of 2007 so I was like okay no more trading I've lost 400 500 bucks already not not like what's what's the point I got I got to clear I got to understand this all better first and then and so all of 2008 all the way up to November 2008 I was um, learning to code practicing on demo account so a whole year I was just passionately it just flew by so quickly i wasn't even thinking about oh i'm not making money it was so interesting i was just doing research i was i was part of a club as well like like you are part of forex boat there's a different club and um i was just doing research posting uh, my research uh, on into the club forum and i was um i was researching like different stuff so the bill williams i was coding a lot for the bill williams indicator i was turning that into row but the code like grew very like a lot like i was coding it for three or four months and i was just adding modules adding modules adding modules and um then i was coding no i wasn't even coding then i was just manually researching the garthian pisavento patterns just because i wanted to see something that actually works um no i'm not saying that they actually work all the time but like for me i i for a month or so i was i was finding all these patterns and and i could see that the you know the success rate and yeah it took me over a year so from i only november 2008 so for answering your question when i learned about forex april 2007 april may june 
so april may june so that's um three months plus six nine plus eleven uh 20 months 20 months it took me so one and a half years or so until i actually uh started earning profitable uh consistent profits from forex trading for robots and uh and but then it like it like just kicked off like a thousand bucks and turned that into fifteen thousand dollars in in three months that that you know like because i put in like it's like an it's like a spring you you squeeze the spring and then you let go it like it flies out so you it it pays off to put in time into and patience into learning into um research into whatever if you're interested in coding into coding into into doing these things um just just like a bulldozer you know like covering all the ground not not rushing into trying to make money forget about that try getting passionate about it and learning everything and then and then the the reward just comes as a, as a bonus that's kind of like the way i saw it all right um thanks for the question uh, Matthews, uh, <laughs> hopefully that was a good answer. All right, so thanks, guys. Let's quickly have a poll, uh, my favorite poll. Um, how would you rate this webinar on a scale from one to five? Very curious uh, what you will say because, you know, on one hand, it was more advanced. It was a bit, it might have felt rushed through if you weren't following along. On the other hand, it was different. It wasn't um, like just talking. It was actually a hands-on practice session. So. Let me know what you think and that will affect on how we structure future sessions whether we'll change some stuff or you know maybe if this was like a total failure we would ask you guys oh what, what can we do better next time <laughs> it's not like that well so far we've got 100 is this it sounds this looks like a um like a glitch i don't see any four stars there we go somebody gave us a four stars wonderful um so we got five stars, 75%, four stars, 25%. Um, <laughs> I'm, thinking, I'm thinking only four people voted. 75, 25, kind of very even split. Uh, there we go, five people voted, another five stars. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, and somebody else voted three stars. All right, so um, fair enough. Not everybody's cup of tea, I understand. Um, thank you very much for attending thank you very much for your questions and for being here appreciate you a lot i appreciate you being part of the club and i'll see you in the club uh, i posted a really cool video recently from stradbroke island it's going to be reposted to the club just now or very soon uh that's going to be cool hope you have a chance to look at that that's about like long-term goals and what why are we doing this and things like that and um yeah so more more awesome stuff coming i uh, that way in August, uh, September, and uh, looking forward to seeing you around. Thanks again, and until next time, happy coding. See you guys.